Rebecca Lynch, Weekly Daily Wednesday. We're going to sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the things fun, interesting, and exciting going on in the world of Linux, open source, and uh, hey, man, that's not Pedro. What's up? But I'm still Glenn Stone. <laughs> that's Joe Bryant. And you know him. You love him. Maybe not. Maybe you have no idea who the strange Canadian being is. That is. I'm totally Aww. Pedro Mateus. What are you talking about? Be quiet. Not Pedro. Aww. You weren't addressed. Um, <laughs> it's another great day for Linux, everyone. Uh, before we get started, we do like to uh, just kind of check up, see what's going on. Uh, I had an interesting error earlier this week, everyone. Oh, boy, did I. Uh, ran out of space. It's like, huh, my 250 gig NVMe out of space. What's going on? Had a 65 gigabyte file, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, the, the, this, this, was, this was a consequence of an experiment on uh, Friday, yeah? <laughs> right. Yes. Shot ourselves in the foot. We, we were playing around with the Proton and Vulcan. X session error, a 65 gigabyte error. It's like, wow. All right, that's the thing. Which I, it's it spooked me too because I went and checked my accession error. That's too what I was that. about to say. That spawned everyone. I, I got a bunch of replies. I was like, wait, all right. And everyone went to go check that. That definitely happened. What's up, Jelly Bean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So I've been uh, really, really busy uh, planning for the biggest Linux Gamecast meetup ever for Scale 17-inch X in March. And our very own Jordan right over there <laughs> is going to be joining us. I'm very, very excited. So we're going to have, uh, we have confirmed Jordan, Empty, and Treggy are all confirmed. And Sandy and Rohit may be coming as well to be with the LGC LA chapter. We'll have, have the most, most people from LGC ever in one place. This will be very exciting. It's kind of like you're tempting California to actually fall off into the ocean. But hey, no. I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 I haven't been up to much in like the, I don't know, four days since you last checked in with me. Um, Played yeah, some D&D, playing... man. Oh yeah, we we did we did a bit of we yeah. did a bit of D and D uh, yesterday. We uh, we finally got around to playing the corpse that love built, and they got they got nice. past the the gate, and then they got murdered by uh, dog scorpions. So that that turned out well. Mm. Maybe you know what? Maybe Ben's right. Maybe maybe we should, we should start uh, streaming a couple more of these impromptu sessions. See how oh, I was joking, out. man. I would not inflict yeah. that yet. How about we do that? Do it. No. Do it. Aww. Never. Hey. Lasers and feelings was a lot of fun. System 76, <laughs> they got a new thing. Thilo, Thilio, it's out of this world handcraft. Oh man, single Thilo. source, free range, wood panel, <laughs> Atari looking. Made, made in America. Hey man, <laughs> they have the regular Thilio, the Thilo Major, and the Thilio Master. Uh, I mean, you can go from mm -hmm. anything from Ryzen, Threadripper, to dual Xeons, and 768 gigajoules of ECC memory, up to four GPUs, and... So only starting at, that's actually not that bad. And that's one thing I wanted to touch on. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, wood grain, new RGB, man. It is the new hotness. Wood grain on all the things. No more blinky stuff. They are a little bit pricey, uh, but it's System 76. So I was digging around, you know, I was like, well, let's well, spec one of these critters out, which I did. And I put it together with a Ryzen 2700X, 16 gigs of RAM, 250 gig NVMe, and a 2070, you know, reasonable. You know, I was like, well, let's get a good CPU. Let's get not the best GPU, but something we can upgrade a little bit down the road. And that clocked in at about uh, $2,178. So mm -hmm. just to be fair, I screeched over to Amazon and I was like, where can I put this thing together for? Same parts, minus the wood green case. Couldn't find that fanciness. Uh... It was about 1486 So, you know, VinMath's warning on this. Mm -hmm. You're paying about $629 premium for this, but they're going to slap it together. They're going to test it, get it shipped to you, and most importantly, not only provide a warranty, they're going to give you support. And a tree. And, hey, man. Yeah. System76, don't like trees, man. They're kind of <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, 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 apparently they're planting a new tree every time you order one of these uh, workstations. Uh, but yeah, no, um, I think we were talking about this a little bit earlier, and this sort of premium isn't what isn't completely out of the realm of uh, sense. You can, this is about what you'd be charged for some sort of Alienware or Voodoo equivalent system, and it 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 is it is nice that you know someone is actually going out and putting together like Linux workstations and trying to sell them as a product. Mm -hmm. And I mean, 
hate hate on the wood as much as you want. I got to give them props for taking a risk and like actually trying to make their systems visually distinct because Apple already has the monopoly on brushed aluminum. Gaming PCs all have this LED super angular yellow design. This is this is like fairly subdued, but it's still like visually remarkable. Hmm. Yeah. And you know, as we've talked about in the past, this is actually uh, System76 CEO Carl Richel's dream of open hardware and software. And it has come to fruition. You know, kudos to System76. This is really awesome. And they they had that beautiful series of animations that led up to the release. And that was, they were really well done. And, um, you know, all the hardware is open, of course, with the exception of the CPU and GPU, of course. But um, that may change in the future. You know, we've we've got lots of open processors out there now that they can they can choose from. And um, this is interesting because several years back, System 76 brought the press in for a meeting to see what people thought of of these proposed unique design elements for their future computers. And um, wood and and the modern design were voted very highly. Yeah, I remember uh, Jupiter Broadcasting was sent there and press event so that was really interesting and that was several years ago so they've been thinking about this uh, for a very long time and i actually love the new case design with wood paneling in your choice of walnut or maple and it has a very 60s minimal and it's just it's just a nice unique change from your your standard computer and gaming rig so mm -hmm. i think it's really cool what what <laughs> one interesting thing is apparently they're they're integrating like a separate daughter board um to handle yes. io and fan and cpu or uh, fan and temperature control uh because there's a lot of proprietary goop that goes on for the on motherboard uh control of that stuff which i think i think is interesting it's a way of like using commercial closed source parts but like still having open source hardware driving yes. io and some some of the other less intensive systems or less critical systems. Yeah, that's definitely 100% yeah. a thing. And I, I like that it's something good for a desktop. You know, if you want a Linux box and you, like genuinely, we joke around on Saturdays, like, wait, we got to go all the way down to the Linux store and buy a Linux machine. You kind of can. And it comes with a Linux warranty, though. That is the mm -hmm. important thing. You don't want to deal with it. I, I don't know. We were talking before we went live. Maybe not so much with the workstations. I would probably still go with the Dell somebody like that just for the, um, you know, the CLA, but it is really, really neat to see. Good job system 76. Yeah. And it's also mm -hmm. available, not with just pop, but with Kubuntu. So you can get some LTS on that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Good, good. And actually the other big deal about this, this is the first time system 76 has pr uh, produced such high end workstations that I can even buy for doing rendering and whatnot for my, my um, animation oh yeah so i've definitely seen people spec really them out awesome. <laughs> you know upwards of like oh yeah 70 grand 70 grand yeah, yeah. just like mm -hmm. just like you know in the world of ibm or dell now you can get a system 76 at that level so that's mm -hmm. pretty awesome all right mm -hmm. well, well, let's talk about red hats and who's that supposed to be peggy carter yes yeah, yes Pe peggy carter <laughs> yeah so red hat is deprecating kde and this news was buried in the midst of the IBM Red Hat takeover. Um, yeah, uh, th this is not surprising to us. And um, they they said that that interest in KDE has been waning. And my reaction to this is is one that Pedro have maybe maybe this is due to stability issues, and um, Red Hat needs the most stable as possible. <laughs> Shouldn't they be using XFCE instead of GNOME if they want stability? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, no, but, that's that, but anyways, that, yeah. But but that that's the thing too. Like you 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 have to acknowledge the fact that uh, GNOME is a uh, Red Hat sponsored project, right? Uh, yes. Red Hat Red Hat now IBM exactly. devotes a lot of money and manpower to maintaining GNOME and to essentially create like a, a pretty desktop for Linux. Uh, something again that's visually distinct that people will look over someone's shoulder and go, "Oh, what's that? One of those Linux things? Never mind. I'm gonna go hide in a corner." Um, that said, though, um, this isn't as big a deal as people are some of the some of the KDE yeah. Sphere folks are making it out to be because it's deprecated. Um, RHEL seven doesn't even have an announced end of life yet. Although, if uh, previous uh, RHEL uh, versions are t any indication, we're probably gonna get one. Uh, we're gonna get an announced EOL la next year. Uh, but at the same time, there is absolutely nothing stopping anyone from building KADE 
uh, four mm-hmm. or five, whatever plasma and sticking it in EPEL with XFCE. That's that's if you want to run XFCE easily on your rel box, you just install the EPEL repos and install it from there. So this is pe- people people are freaking out about this. I, I think this is kind of a non-issue. And oh, I you, you brought up yeah. being a non-issue. I mean, could you hundred yeah. percent get to be re- if you're dealing with enterprise and say you have like a regular client with like ten thousand seats, if they want support for KDE, they're gonna get it. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's another thing, and this isn't even gonna be an issue until twenty twenty four. So that's another thing. Uh, Jonathan Riddle, he pointed yeah. out, you know, he's like, hey man, Red Hat and KDE, they, they've never been BFFs, not by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. Not that there was any type of like hatred between the two but uh, as jordan pointed out you know back in the day they were like yeah, we're going to be working with gnome they didn't hug up to kde so much because uh being based on the qt and that wasn't completely open sourced for quite a minute uh, yeah, that's right one thing i saw and like, I, I worry sometimes is the register man the, oh the, i know <laughs> they, they wrote so tongue-in-cheek completely uh-huh. tongue-in-cheek that no, oh, this is the real reason that uh, IBM bought Red Hat to cover this. It's like who who didn't read that? Going ah, uh, all right, you're being funny. I get it. People just, just quit reading just the headlines. Re- read the article because that's how that was written. And I, that's yeah. a lot that of takes, like that takes effort though. Then I, I, I don't know, think I can do that. It, oh, it was hard. clickbait. <laughs> I just had to. It wasn't even clickbait. I mean, it was written. Yeah satirically yeah uh, uh, satirically yeah that's true uh, hu- humor is lost on some people i fear mm-hmm. there, there is no sarcasm on the internet jordan backing up is a horrible idea it is not part of our yolo lifestyle listen raid is about as good as backup so if you set up a raid you don't need to back things up no don't ever say that if you say that and or you hear someone say that slap them slap them hard um so this is someone uh on github cytopia uh created a little shell script called linux time machine and it's i i I read through it it's effectively a wrapper for our sync but it's supposed to mimic uh time machine the the apple backup solutions functionality um and it it even has a thing for passing rsync options to it if you just want to drop the pretense and just use rsync. Um, but it it's it's a semi simplified command syntax for for rsync. Take a shot every time I say rsync. This is this is going to take a while. Um, <laughs> not 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 to mention that um, I I I I can kind of see where this would come in use in the sense that if someone's moving from Mac to Linux and they say, well, I want Time Machine on Linux. They'll, this will probably show up first in their Google results. Um, but this is not to mention other backup solutions available on Linux, such as Bacula, not Scott Bacula, mm-hmm. just regular oh, Bacula. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> a little bit of a side. One thing I want to say, uh, unlike Windows users, Mac users, not terrified of command lines. Surprisingly. Yeah. Some. It's, it's, some, some. Yeah, oh, some are, but still from the... Small percentage. <laughs> come on, man. Windows is like, I have to open a command line. Into, and it's like, just shut up. Go back to Windows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every, every, everything's been moved into an app, though. So for like the non-technical Mac users, this will be terrifying to them. Uh, but for some of the more developy Mac users who are looking to switch over to Linux because MacBooks are freakishly expensive for what you get. Does this uh, have yeah. any distinct advantage over just say rsync? No, it, it is rsync. Mm, All right. Yeah, it's rsync. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you get the simplified syntax and that's it. Kind of addressing one of those issues is looking at it as like I, I could see this being useful with somebody coming from a Mac or maybe somebody coming from Windows if it also had a big honking GUI on a it GUI. with a back me up and yeah. a draggable meter like, like, of time. Like Amanda or Bacula. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Bacula. that. But hey man, this is Linux. <laughs> if we don't do if we do one thing well, it's duplication. <laughs> Absolutely. Um up next we got <laughs> laptop hack, hacky laptops so this this is from hackcomputer.com links to all this stuff in our show notes <laughs> um what this uh what this presents itself as is a computer they'll give you a, a 300 asus laptop it is a um when well, i wrote this down an e406 ma which has uh, either a pentium or a celeron depending on how you spec it out four gigs of ram uh i think a, like a 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte emmc solid state drive and yeah, and 
actually actually the biggest thing here is a 1080p display i was surprised they didn't go with 1366 by 768 so that's kind of nice but yeah what really matters is the software that comes on here um it is going to be a tailor-made operating system based on linux to that is designed with a bunch of content to teach children how to program how to hack etc etc there's even some like games alongside it and you're gonna have to it, it comes with a couple months free of a subscription service where they will continually uh, provide like more challenges and more little games for people who are interested in doing that kind of stuff. I think though that the smart kids who get these their hands on these are going to do what what I and my high school friends did and nuke the a pre-installed operating system, install Windows <laughs> yes. or Linux, and just play Serious Sam during class. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a good use. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, it's 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 nice that it comes with uh, actually endless OS pre-installed so that it can be used with without an Internet connection and sandboxed, which is really wonderful for organizations like kids on computers who uh, take computers into third world countries and uh, teach them uh, computers and Linux and technology. So this I could see as very, very useful. In fact, I'm going to let them know about this if they don't know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's that's really cool. That's one of the organizations that Linux Chicks LA uh, volunteers for, and we yeah, help. I, I can yeah. I can definitely see a little <laughs> bit of overlap with like OLPC. Um, yes. Yeah. Except this 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 is a little more like expensive boutique ish. Yeah. Because you don't have yeah. to crank it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and and there are you know there are others of course in the space that actually have been very successful like the the Cano Raspberry Pi 3 kit for kids to learn how to build computers and learn to code and um that's another option uh to this and mm -hmm. and uh it's nice that there's several options and yeah the Cano computer has been doing very well so i can see why there's some other others in this market now and it's a good thing because the more the merrier <laughs> Jill, are you trying to imply that Kano wins? Yeah. <laughs> Fatality. Don't know yet. Fatality. Don't know yet. But the Kanos have been awesome. I've um, helped kids with, with their Kano computers before. And when we did our Raspberry in Pi install fest for Linux Chicks LA, um, we had one of the adults came in with a Kano computer and we were helping her learn how to use it to teach um, her nephew how to use it so and build it. I can so kind of see cool. it. It looks like a decent idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of guessing this is going to be aimed at kids somewhere around like 10 and under because like Jordan said, yeah. you're just going to wipe and do what wipe you can and... with that hardware with yeah. four gigs of RAM. But uh, I, I kind of like how it's set up to allow them to change the interfaces and stuff like that. Guiding mm -hmm. them down. Now, this I would never mm -hmm. buy this for a child is a primary laptop. And I was like, here's that other laptop that you can play around with. Um, Jordan, you pointed up the first 500 beta users there get a lifetime subscription to hack. Yeah. The <laughs> so mm. hmm. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Think of it as like a hack, like a pine book that you can actually buy. I don't know. Or, 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 or like yeah. a computer camp that you don't have to send your kids out to go to. You can just lock them in the basement. Yeah. And I'm even going to be honest yeah. with you. The only thing that is a little bit off putting and I understand they're going to make money is a subscription service. I'm like, ah, yeah. what, what happens yeah. when the company goes bye bye? That, that, and that, and that's yeah. basically it. I'm if, if, if they're responsible, which, you know, we, we can hope they are, they'll probably do a dump to release everything um, available. But some, some, sometimes companies go under fast and they get scooped up and then disintegrated. So you never know. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Mint. Yes. So uh, further hey. confirming the suspicion that Linux <laughs> Mint is just a skin for Windows 7. Yeah. And behold, there's a <laughs> there's a new uh, there's a new uh, UI out for Cinnamon. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be for Linux Mint 19.1. And it uh, if, if, if you if you if you scroll down, it, 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 it looks like they're, they're adding some new stuff. But the, the big thing here is Cinnamon. Cinnamon is adding a or is modifying their existing taskbar to look something more like Windows 7, uh, where all the applications are sort of grouped together. Um, and the, the it's a sort of a hybrid launcher taskbar type thing. So uh, you can you can switch it back. It's going to be a setting. But I, I, I don't know, like given Mint's goal to be like Babby's first Linux, right? Keeping the design elements consistent with Windows kind of makes sense because people will go will go to a Linux Mint install and it won't be a completely foreign visual experience for it. It'll sort of use the same sort of visual language and iconography, which I, I guess is good for weaning people off uh, Microsoft. Well, but, you said you Babby's know. first Linux, yeah. Linux. Don't you mean Antargos? 
<laughs> no, um, Arch. Uh, man, I remember back in the day, back in the day, Mint was the, you know, the Arch Linux of its day. It was like, oh, it's the new hotness is what everybody's playing with. And, you know, for yeah. good reason, for good reason, uh, I, I kind of dig it, man. They're, they're going to be working with 19 one. They're going to try to get that business out for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Aha. Hail Santa. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? Oh, the icon chooser. I think that's a good idea to allow their apps to kind of get everything sorted and displayed correctly. Cause I know that can definitely yes. be an issue with, uh, people who like pretty things. Jill, can you tell <laughs> yeah. the difference? I looked at all the screenshots and I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't see the difference unless I really try. I know some people are like, you can clearly see the difference. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're cleaner and sharper and bigger, which is nice. <laughs> and uh, actually, you know, their software center is really coming along. It's looking nice. Um, but what's also nice about this is that you, if you don't want these new, quote, modern design elements, you can always uh, just install the old interface. Uh, it's just one click away. So if you want it still to look like Windows XP, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but I, 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 I think that's sort of necessary. The the, the sheer yeah. amount of re that would be emitted from the Linux yeah. the user base when you make uh, these sort of Major, sweeping changes yeah, like changes. that. Uh, yeah, yeah the, you, you have to you have to provide a method of reverting very very quickly, and because like it's still cinnamon, <laughs> you it's just yeah. moving moving some desktop elements around, so it's a it's like a radio box. You get old UI, yeah, new UI, old yeah. UI, new yeah. UI, Australia, America. Australia, America. Too many choices, America. man. The GNOME project hates it. I know options. Uh, oh well, I love cinnamon. Cinnamon's great. It's great for new users too. <laughs> Mint, it's awesome. <laughs> cinnamon belongs in gum. Oh, this is true. <laughs> mm. Well, okay. it's nice also that they, um, you know, they've made some other cool changes too, like making uh, the the default dark is uh, the default theme is dark now, which is awesome. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> dark like your soul. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Hey, man, you have to have a dark soul to delve into Linux <laughs> audio. And this is something I just wanted to bring up. If you are into like doing digital synthesis and just setting up racks for that, there is, a, you know, a VCV rack is something that you'd definitely be playing with. And it's like, oh, that's neat, but I can't really use this as a plugin in like Bitfig or Ardour or anything like that. So user STH writes in, he's like, hey, man, I'm working on this. You can plug it in. It's a dynamically loaded plugin and you can do cool stuff, which it's thrown up on GitHub. And so I just took the Pepsi challenge with it. I played around with it, got it set up in Ardour. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's a gang of stuff in here to play with. I mean, you can make all the beeps, all the boops, and just look at the. You, you can get this Neat. nightmare going on your desktop. And that's what I like. Yay. I like something the, the, that looks, you know, the, heinously the, complex. This is this is like some Ven porn. Uh, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> it it's a bit more gooey than I like, but I, I mean, listen, if you really want to mix it up, magic, this is the kit for you, and you don't have to wire it in manually through. Uh, like your matrix so you can do it i did it right from my door it shows up per track basis you can throw it in uh the only issue i really had with it is first world problems uhd displays it really didn't deal with that too well mm. so wanted to give the project a mention it's neat free as in doesn't cost anything so yeah go check yeah. it out All yay right. uh hang on we, we, <laughs> we, we got our segment coming up Yes, we it, have it, our it, Microsoft it, segment. <laughs> it's it's Sriracha Nutella. Sriracha yes. Novella, man. Jeez, were you ever going to pronounce his name right? <laughs> so I like what Ben said. Guys, we're serious in the show notes. Okay, so Microsoft is porting sysinternals tools to Linux and releases ProcDump. ProcDump on Linux? Really? Do we need that? <laughs> no. <laughs> so ProcDump, for those of you that don't know, is one of the Microsoft sysinternal command line utilities, which provides a convenient way for developers to create core dumps of their application based on performance triggers. So you can basically debug your programs, and it's awesome. And I used to use this in Windows all the time to debug 3D animation program crashes and, and still occasionally do use it. Um, but under Linux, you know, we, <laughs> as if we need more of these kind of tools under Linux, I, we I was, already I was have, say, like, <laughs> you know? how, how is this different from GDB? Yeah, you know, that, exactly. That, that widely used debugger that is pre-installed on most systems. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, and the, we already the, even the, have ProcDump. 
you know yeah. we already have our own version of it <laughs> so and so the, the the interesting thing too is that they say in the they say in the blog post that this is uh, some reduced functionality because it depends on some Windows stuff for um, the proper version. System internals yeah. for those of you who don't know is a collection of utilities. Um, at, w at one point they were developed separately from Microsoft, and then you know Microsoft bought them out. But they, it, it essentially provided functionality that the OS lacked for you know interrogating files and processes and network connections and so on and so forth. Basically, any anything that on, under Linux would be like an apt-get or a yum install away, you had to go to the system internal site and install a bunch of um, standalone EXEs. Um, I guess this is useful for Windows admins who are migrating to Linux because it gives them some consistent tooling. But again, yeah. GDB exists. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really liked was David Fowler um, and Microsoft. He's like, turns out we made a proc dump for Linux. I was like, ooh, that doesn't come across like I think you wanted it to. It's like, yeah. I have no idea. Uh, um, surprise. <laughs> way ahead of that one. <laughs> Jordan, you're 100% on that. I mean, I definitely think you got to think of this particular bit of kit as training wheels for sysadmins from Windows coming over to Linux. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need some, you need that um, familiarity uh, like layer. Like, mm -hmm. okay, like transition. Like, mm, these are big, scary things. There's not yeah, enough buttons to click on. Yeah, consistent tooling is actually like a really big thing that I feel gets neglected a lot in the enterprise space, mm -hmm. where every everything has its mm -hmm. own special vendor UI or whatever. And it, it makes it so that skills you develop in one environment are not portable to another environment, um, which, result, which, which results in a culture of button pushers and not actual administrators and debuggers. Well, this, this is the new Microsoft, man. They, in, in a kind of a way, I don't even mean that as a joke. It's like, we want to be on everything. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is like exactly. the new corporate strategy. It's like Microsoft everywhere. We don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Seems mm -hmm. legit. It's not going to work. Linux PGA. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and, and, until <laughs> yes, they buy it canonical, exactly. and then they are Linux. Or they release the... Or they, or they release a ten dollar Linux distribution for Windows. Hey man, I mean, what? Maybe you want to throw ten dollars hey. our way, and one way you can do that is head Yay. over to linuxgamecast dot com forward slash support. We got a couple of ways. The best way is Patreon, that gives us a budget, lets us aim at things. Because I'm trying to put together hardware to send these two critters for scale, so we can record all that nonsense. <laughs> uh, we got a new person, Admiral JT. Not new, yeah. but awesome increased. because he increased he his increased pledge. his pledge. And he got up to, I think, over Death Note level. Send me a note. We'll hook you up with the show notes. We got a bunch of rewards, including your own RSS feed, where you get Game of Who. Jordan, what's that about? Um, <laughs> it's a show that I'm occasionally on when I don't mm -hmm. have family issues to deal with, uh, where we uh, <laughs> recap the latest episodes of uh, Doctor Who and sometimes Game of Thrones if they come out this year or <laughs> next year or no. whenever. And then sometimes yeah. Jill's on it because she was on it last <laughs> week. We did that yes. thing. Yeah. But uh, we don't really like putting anything behind a paywall. Uh, we are completely listener supported and independent in that way. But we do do a, I guess you can call it production meeting, Jordan. Yeah, you can you can sort of creep on that if you're if you're giving us two fifty a week or an episode really because we you don't you don't have to pay anything if we don't produce anything for the week. Um, you can you can kind of eavesdrop in and I guess can 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 they talk this time around or okay. was that not? we're doing things man baby steps i got it mm -hmm. said when you, you get your rss feed so you get all this nonsense and your own custom thing at patreon you mm -hmm. plug it into any rss player and mm -hmm. but we do that live starting at 8 30 through discord which you can join you'll get a little key and like, boop you can come hang out with us the other six days of the week it's horrible it's terrifying in there not really mm -hmm. just from really smart people um myself not included mm -hmm. but yeah, it's <laughs> smart we people, have voice right? channels so you can straight up just click in creep on the show uh at uh death note level or above but i got it set for executive producers if you want to chime in because atomic's like i'd like to say something i'm like all right talk <laughs> so he's not going to say anything just to, out of spite which i respect him for <laughs> um what oaks do we have we, we got humble thanks everyone who ordered through that and double thanks for amazon we got affiliate links that you can click on that for stuff that you're going to buy anyway and i do want to point out anybody in north america if you don't have amazon prime i'm not trying to sell you anything what i'm trying to do is give you a heads up Yesterday, Amazon clicked on a button. Anything you order, free shipping. Until Ooh. the end of St. Whatever Nick thing. And uh, I don't think it's two-day shipping, but it's free. So there's not like a minimum of I'm, 25 I'm not sure if that's in Canada, though. I'll have oh, to tell you. Oh, no, sweetheart. 
Canada doesn't get nice things. What are you talking about? <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for making this possible. Let's keep on doing And we're looking forward to uh, having something for you for scale. Maybe some live stuff, too. Ooh, Planning cool. phase. Terrifying. Yay. All right. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Slice of pie time, where we talk about fun Raspberry Pi projects like the Crow Pie, a compact Raspberry Pi educational mm -hmm. kit. It comes in a nice little uh, briefcase that you should totally take to an airport, you guys. Yeah, Dude. that looks yeah. totally. That's so cool. <laughs> but uh, but it it, it 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 comes with a bunch of it comes with a bunch of neat stuff. Um, it comes with the integrated breadboard. It comes with a bunch of uh, sensors buttons dials knobs etc etc for you and even a little seven inch uh, LED lcd screen for you to um put together some impromptu raspberry pi projects um as yeah it has a bunch of stuff like a sound sensor ultrasonic sensor uh, servo interface uart etc etc and it's all it's all run through the raspberry pi you can see it in the top left hand corner of the box look at that it's so beautiful Fits in all <laughs> actually, actually, that one doesn't fit in Altoids tin. That's the Beagle board. Uh, but anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, the the, the um, it's it's available now. You can buy it for about two hundred thirty dollars US, which is a little pricey. But the presentation is nice, and you get like a lot of you get a lot of stuff in one place. You can sort of just pop this up and make some impromptu electronic prototypes. I agree with you one hundred percent. Keep this thing away <laughs> from any and all TSA anything. This is a negative TSA. Oh yeah, except. definitely. <laughs> Because the only thing I would want to do is have a countdown timer and beeping. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I know, right? Do not take this new. And th they give you the things to do just right. that. And it's sitting right there. I mean, this this thing genuinely, it, it looks like they played keep talking and no one explodes. And like, yes, how about yes. some of that? Let, let's do one of those. Um, how yes. many serial, what's the serial <laughs> number on the back of the thing? How many batteries does it have? <laughs> oh man, maybe we yeah. set it. Uh, let's see, what would be a low, low enough yield explosive to piss you off and not kill you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gotta agree with you, man. Uh, for two twenty nine, though, this is definitely an educational piece of kit that you could buy for you know the holidays coming up. That would pass the uh, parent acceptance thing, acceptance bit uh, because at two twenty nine, yes. it is presented very well like you said jordan now the 249 they're sold out they're going to be sold out until the end of november and it is also 30 dollars plus on shipping though so. I, I i will say i will yeah. say this though like mm -hmm. at that price point this is about like game console price for parents so if you yeah. want your kids to stop playing mm -hmm. the fortnites or the halos or whatever they're doing these days you, can you want get your kids to be genuinely cross with you <laughs> yes <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe turn this into an actual bomb don't actually do it kids no. do it yeah jill are you buying one right oh. now you're gonna give it oh, to steve yeah. teach him how to program actually, yeah actually i i you hear that I steve get you're this. getting one <laughs> yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> and i've actually been reading a lot about this late, lately this is just awesome because it's not only a raspberry pi computer for kids like the cano and uh the other laptop with the laptop we were talking about today the hack top for kids but it, it doesn't only teach coding software but electronics as well so that is unique in this in in that space too for kids mm -hmm. so right on <laughs> right on <laughs> really awesome <laughs> hey this is a fun show maybe you have some thoughts about it maybe we got stuff right something wrong or maybe you have some ideas of things we should cover you can get in touch with us how do they do that jay baby which day, baby? There are two of them here. You sweet. Uh, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> Click the contact button. Um, look, 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 look at those lovely faces here. That's not this show. This is a different show. But you can pick your you can you can pick your topic from the drop down. Uh, we got LGC Weekly, Weekly Daily Wednesday, which is this show. Or if you want me to solve your relationship problems, uh, I will totally do that and not sabotage you. No, sir, not at all. All you need to do is fill out the forms, your name, your email, a subject line, and a message. And for extra points, maybe hide a pickle in there. Who knows? Um, we got we got some we got some hate mail though. I guess it's not hate mail. This is feed Mac. This is the, the hate mail feed is the other show. Yes, this is our feed, new segment, feed, feed Mac, feed. where we eat Max. <laughs> or, or or we feed things to Max. Also, this known is from as feed Mac. Uh, yeah. Yeah, th this is from uh, this from uh, ne the first one's from Nemo. He's talking about open power. I know you yeah. saw this tweet, but maybe you wanted me to do the right thing and push that contact button. You totally should, guys, or message us on Patreon. That works too. If Red Hat culture infects IBM, do you think IBM will start releasing cheaper devices on the open power architecture? I think IBM is missing out on the advantages of having a ubiquitous version of their hardware, like ARM does. Think Odroid sized boards. I almost read that as bombs <laughs> with power chips. <laughs> Could you imagine a Raspberry Pi sized power handheld optimizing and debugging? for power is going to be a lost art 
Jill, you have some thoughts. Oh, oh yes. So, so good. Very good question to Kresny. And I, I completely agree with you. But unfortunately, I think somehow I think IBM will probably stick with their power architecture at the server level because I, I, that's just the way they've been doing things. But it sure would be nice to have another high end competitor to risk five. That's for sure. And, um, but now that IBM is thinking more about cloud infrastructure, because of their purchase of Red Hat, creating a consumer level power processor device would be smart and much more powerful than the Raspberry can even offer. So that would be, I, I, I will, could only hope. Well, I definitely see like, like what they're going to be know. rolling out with the cloud <laughs> so, infrastructure is going to be power based. Yeah, I mean, we're talking enterprise Surge. stuff. We're not talking yeah. about, you know, hey, I, I need this to spool up That's exactly. a couple of instances. <laughs> Um, yeah. and you know, x86 desktop, I don't think we'll be seeing power so much as we'll be seeing Hercules <laughs> with arms. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> well, yes. and, and, uh, I, I was, I was going to say something similar to that. Um, prior to the acquisition, Red Hat was doing a lot of work with the enterprise arm development stuff, uh, yes. uh with the Lenaro organization and the cleverly named Lenaro Ag enterprise group, AKA leg, um, leg. <laughs> but, um, here, here, here's 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 the thing. Um, Red Hat, Red Hat um, by def or well, Fedora project, which will eventually turn into Red Hat, uh, supports a lot of architectures out of the box, including Power, including Spark, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think though that we're we're gonna we might start seeing some interesting coprocessor stuff if IBM wants to integrate a bunch of ARM and Power stuff, where you can use ARM for some of the low-powered stuff and Power for some of the more demanding stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if. Uh, there, there seems to be a big push from like power PC fans to make power PC mm -hmm. a thing again, but I don't think the industry is moving in that direction necessarily. It's probably going to continue to exist because IBM has a lot of money invested in there. Right. But yeah, the, the future seems to be like low powered specialized hardware, like using 64 bit arm and coprocessors. AMD has some, had some yeah. interesting stuff with their HSA heterogeneous computing environment stuff. It remains to be seen. I don't think we're going to see tiny power boards, though. They'd probably yeah. cook you on. They'd probably cook yeah. you. <laughs> the Why do you itself. hate my dreams? Um, Aww. Because they suck. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> last but not least, uh, Chibs wrote in. He's like, yo, just letting everyone know. And I was like, hey, man, I'll throw it mm -hmm. in. Why not? Uh, AT&T, mm -hmm. they're cracking down on all you dirty pirates. He writes, <gasps> not that any <laughs> of us enhance our Plex library with questionable means, <laughs> dot, 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 but comma. Maybe we should be aware if we're AT and T now. Yeah, that kind of that news kind of dropped out of orbit this morning. AT and T's like, yo, there's like twelve yeah. people. We're just gonna cut their business off, and they can't get service from us anymore. And I read into that. Mm -hmm. I, I think these are people who've received like nine plus warnings. Mm. Mm -hmm. So e these are the dumb ones, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kids, don't buy it. If you got enough money for high speed internet, you got enough money to buy it. In lieu of that, use a yeah. VPN. I mean, for your own protection, also <laughs> completely yeah. not related to piracy, just use a VPN. Yeah. Um, do, do you have that issue in Canada? How's Rogers? Rogers is like, you filthy so, Canadian hoser. So I remember, I remember years and years and years ago, I had picked up a copy of uh, Photoshop over LimeWire because I was a filthy pirate back then back when i was still using windows and a couple days later uh my mother got an email from mm. roger saying you've been downloading this season and desist um of course they never actually did anything and i kept pirating software for a number of years um but that's that that's the thing um if at&t is going to actually go through with their threats and start pulling the plugs on people yeah start maybe doing things to anonymize your network traffic or uh or use a vpn to just mm -hmm. straight up encrypt what you're doing so they can't well, they're going to have a harder time doing deep pack inspection because let's let's be real. If they 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 have a lot of money to throw at the problem, right? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't think the ISP scares one way or the other. They just want to deal with it, like make it covered up so we can't easily find it. But I think the important thing to say is make sure your kids are using a VPN. Is what I'm really trying yeah. to get across to everybody because uh, guess what? Your internet service might get cut off because little Timmy, yeah. Little Timmy's been mm -hmm. watching too much of, uh, I don't know, it would be a good show, Game of Thrones. And little Timmy's four. You should keep an eye on him. <laughs> yeah, little, little Timmy's starting to take after little Joffrey a little too much. Right. <laughs> Why did you give him a crossbow, Dad? I don't know. He asked for one. <laughs> um, Jill, have you, I'm, I've gotten yeah. one uh, with from AT&T, actually, back when I had Yuvos. Oh. Um, 
No. Four. I, I kid you not. What was it? What was the name of the show? Uh, with the vampires, HBO. Uh, True Blood. Mm. Oh, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. It's okay. And and they they said was like you've downloaded. And I was like oh touche touche. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> did get that. And uh, guilty. This was years yeah. ago, but now you can get the HBO. And I'm like, here you go, HBO. Give me my Game of Thrones because I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Um, Jill, how, how many yeah. uh, takedown notices do you get every week? Oh, I've <laughs> no, I've never had one. <laughs> Jill pays like four hundred dollars a month for a cable TV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, like that's the thing too. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious in terms of like how many people are, how many people are getting these notices are also like not paying for like the five hundred dollar a month cable subscription that gets everything. Because I'm sure if yeah. you're doing that, they don't care. Right. Uh, honestly, I genuinely do not believe there was a group now defunct group that used to keep track of this stuff and. The ISPs are like, we don't want to deal with this. We, I mean, we just want your money, man. Come on. Mm. <laughs> and it's always a third party saying, you need to interject on the behalf. And at and like, quit, quit. Siri. at and wording, man. They're like, well, we tried to re-educate users. They're like, okay. But yeah, uh, just just keep an eye out for yourself and yeah. for your kids. You don't want your internet to be cut off one day and be like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> that would not you, be Use that fun. Tor browser. <laughs> <laughs> Head on, head on that dark web. Go buy your. You yeah. know what? Never mind. Don't yeah. let me finish that thought. Don't. All right. <laughs> We're going to bounce out of here. It's been fun. <laughs> Let's do some credits. Yay. Stranger Things Generator. <laughs> nope. Hard. <laughs> Did what we could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. My dissonance. Well, WDW. The, 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 the visuals and the credits don't match, or the visuals yes. and the sounds don't match. My brain. Because we have our, oh. our special Jordan here today with us. That's why he gets special yes. treatment. <laughs> yes, Thank special you, treatment. No, I'm totally not being <laughs> manacled to my desk right now, forced to do a podcast. No, sir. You pay extra for that. Of course you're not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jordan, for joining us. <laughs> well, of course, it's, pa always... <laughs> it's Pedro who owes me now. I'm on. And I'm going to exact my toll in very, very creative ways. Mm. Aw. And thank you to Vin, as always. <laughs> hey, man, I just show up and cut this thing on. You, you're the weirdos that show up. <laughs> and thank you to our beautiful executive producers and producers for all, all that you do. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> and there's Frank giving thanks as well. <laughs> yep. That ain't stank. <laughs> that's Frank. That's it's yeah. the Frank thanks. Stinks it. <laughs> now don't 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 get him angry. Or he'll drive his Frank tank over your bank. Frank tank. Frank tank. Frank tank. Bye, See you next week. <laughs> bye. Okay. Bye bye everyone. Lou, we love you.